What is up guys, Dane again. This video is from a digital course that I was working on called Facebook Ad Mechanics. Instead of just trying to release it and trying to make you buy it, I am actually just going to give the content for you for free. Each lesson is going to have a short uh, lecture section where I just simply talk to you about what we're going to be accomplishing in explaining it. And then after that, we're going to be jumping to my computer and I'm going to show you exactly what to do. So with that being said, go ahead and enjoy the lesson. You're going to be hearing from me talking about what we're about to do, and I hope this serves you. Let's dig in and set up our first ad, a post engagement ad. Now, typically this is what a boosted post is actually based on. I know it seems a little bit odd, like, hey, we don't want to do boosted posts, why are we doing one? Well, if you remember the funnel that I talked about earlier, this is about building social proof and awareness. So let me explain why you would probably actually want to run an engagement campaign. Now, when you're running an engagement campaign, you have to remember Facebook is gonna send this to people who are more likely to comment, like, and share. Not buy, and maybe not buy yet, but they're more likely to comment, like, and share. This is a good way to kind of build some rapport with some people if you think about it. Like say if you have a hair salon. Put some hair on this girl. Say I have a hair salon. You want you decide you're gonna go ahead and make a post engagement campaign because this girl right here is very happy and has a very big smile because she's very happy. So on this one, you actually want to get comments, likes, and shares. Why? Social proof. We're right now building rapport with say other people who would be interested in getting their hair done. Hey look, this person right here is happy. A lot of other people say, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. They're sharing it to their friends and they're giving likes. It could be, and of course this is the real beauty of a post engagement, you can put a call to action button. So the real beauty is that once people see all that, it's kind of like getting the town gossip or a better way to put it. It's, it's kind of like having actual, like you know when you get a referral from someone, like an in-person someone, you're more likely to do it. It's like, hey, that person said it, they liked it. Let's try it out. It's the same thing. This is your word of mouth marketing right here. Maybe, you know, most people probably aren't gonna buy at this point. Some of them will. They'll probably hit the call to action because they want to be, you know, happy and smiley too. But now we are on the road. We're right here in the beginning of the funnel. Right here. Some people might buy, some people probably aren't, and they're probably gonna take a little bit more chastising. But this is the beginning right here, is we want to get some engagement so people know we exist, so people know that there's other stuff, so people know that other people like us, so we are out there. So let's go ahead and jump on in and set this thing up. All right, guys, so let's get to work and set up that post engagement ad. Now, as you can tell right now, we're in Power Editor. Me personally, I like to be over here in Ads Manager. As you just saw, I click on the little buttons right here to go right on down. The reason why I like Ads Manager over Power Editor is for setting up a new ad, I believe it's a little bit more streamlined. When it comes to optimizing and editing ads, I think Power Editor is the better way to go. But since we are doing a completely new type of ad, I like to start with Ads Manager. Now, if you've already started a couple of campaigns, your page probably doesn't look like that. Over here, you probably have a nice screen that says create ad. Go ahead and click that button so we'll go ahead and catch up. Now, since we're on this page, what you want to do is you want to go into the consideration part. You want to go down here to engagement. As soon as you click that, Facebook takes you on down. And you want to make sure that this part right here, post engagement, is selected. And of course, go ahead and give your campaign a nice name. What I recommend, especially say if you're doing something for a certain amount of time or if there's a certain reason for this post engagement campaign, go ahead and name the campaign that name. Like for example, this one I'm going to type in right now. Okay, so as you can tell, this is going to be for President's Day weekend. It's an engagement campaign and also for the creative, we're going to be using a picture. This ad account is a little bit different. This is one I just have as a tester. So yours is going to say continue, mine says set up ad account. But as you can tell, we land on the same page. Now, this page is very important and is super crucial to make sure you define who you want to target your ad to. So I know in the earlier modules I was talking about using the audience research tool 
This is where it all comes into play. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to target a local audience. Now, this is how I usually target a local audience. As you can tell right now, we have the United States, the entire country, mind you, selected. We don't want to target that because look at all those people. If you're a smaller local store, say in Marietta, California, that is a huge number of people who are most likely not going to be coming to your business. I like to go ahead and deselect it all and type in the cities that I know my current customers are coming from. So say if I'm running a small store just in Marietta, I want to make sure my ad is going to people who live in Marietta and also probably the surrounding areas. Another thing I like to do is I like to add in the other names of the cities as well. So for example, another city really close by Marietta is Temecula. I'm also going to go ahead and put in another city, like say Paris for example. And that, yes, that is actually Paris, California. Small little place. Now as you can tell, right from here you can go ahead and adjust the size to be bigger. Or I can go ahead and make it smaller. Personally. I like to make it smaller. And if you want, you can also make it just the current city. I personally like to have a little bit of leeway. I'm pretty familiar with this area. I actually live in it. I, I pretty much know that there's people that are living here and right here. Over here, not as much. So I'm pretty much fine with how this looks. And another real important distinction, I'm focusing on people that live in this area. So let's go ahead and make sure this is selected to live in. If you don't, if you just leave it on everyone who is in this area, I mean that could be accounting for people driving along the freeway right here. They might be traveling from Canada to Mexico, which is actually very possible. And you want to make sure that your ad isn't targeting those people. However, keep in mind, you can do this as well. So just kind of keep that in your, in your back pocket when it comes to marketing your business. So let's say I'm pretty happy with this. I can also go ahead and target a little bit more about the people I want. Say I have a store that sells stuff to young people like millennials, since that's always what people like to talk about. I definitely want to take this way out of the 65 plus and bring it on down here to say about 37. It's kind of crazy to think millennials are starting to get up there in that age. And say if my business you know, after looking through my audience insights and I figure out who tends to like my company more, I find that women, they really resonate with what my company offers. I want to make sure that I'm targeting women. There's no point targeting both men and women if only one group prefers your brand over the other. At that point, you're just wasting ad spend. Go ahead and make sure you select the type of language you want this to go to. California is a pretty multicultural place, so since my ad's going to be in English, I want to make sure the people who see it can read and understand it. And keep this as another option for you as well. Say if you have a company and in California a lot of people here speak Spanish. Say if you want to target Spanish speakers, there's an option for you. Target those who can read Spanish. Now this is where the fun really comes in. And this is both a blessing and a curse, the interests. This is where you really need to dig deep into what your brand offers and who is going to be interested in it. There's some stuff that's really interest. Say, for example, I have a company that does hair or makeup for women. You can usually just type in makeup. And look, makeup brush, makeup lessons, all sorts of things. So say if I had a company that is going to be offering lessons for lessons to uh, you know be a person that does professional makeup I'm a guy okay so I don't know what the correct name is but makeup lessons so I want to target people in that age range in this area look 8,600 people that's great however keep in mind just because the interest is here doesn't mean it's something people are interested in I know for one of my clients and this is a much more difficult client Let's say he has a mattress store. True, you can find mattress under interest. And I have tried this before. And what I found out is that most people really aren't going to be interested in mattresses. So you actually want to figure out some other way to connect your brand with your potential clients. 
if it's something that they have genuine interest in, go ahead and shoot for interest. If you have to find another way to connect your potential clients with your brand, go ahead and do so and do some research before plugging in a bunch of things into here. Also keep in mind another thing. A lot of these are interests, but you do also have job titles. Make sure you target accordingly. Sometimes it's really easy to accidentally select an interest over, say, a job title or a demographic. Also, Facebook does have some suggestions in here as well, such as demographics, interest, behaviors. You can find a lot of this stuff out using the Audience Builder tool, so go ahead and keep that in your back pocket. Last but not least, connections. You can target people who like your Facebook page. So I know some people say, what does a like really mean? Well, if they're already engaged and you want a special offer just for those who follow your, your company, go ahead and just target them specifically. Now, once if you only want to reach people who don't like your page, new people that don't know you, you can do that as well. Me personally, I always leave it unselected just because of the way how Facebook reach works. I like to leave it like that. And we're moving on down. Now the next place right here is going to be automatic placement versus edit placements. You're going to see a lot of different ideas about which is better. This is my opinion. Okay. I personally believe that if we're marketing on Facebook, we need to be where people's eyes are on Facebook, which is the feed, the general area that people see on Facebook. True, I have heard people using these other areas to get leads and customers from, but if you're targeting people, you want to make sure that your promotion or your company is right where people are seeing. Also, if you're planning on doing Instagram, keep in mind this is where you want to make sure you're there too. Let me say one thing before I get off on an Instagram tangent. If you're creating an ad only for Instagram, make it only for Instagram. Make sure it's one or the other, not both. And we're moving on down. This is another critical one right here, is daily budget. Now you either can do daily budget or lifetime budget. Say for example, you have a promotion you wanna run for the weekend and you only wanna spend $50. This is where you're gonna be adding that right on in. And then of course you wanna make sure that you select the proper weekend, so say it's Say it's going to be the first weekend of March, right there. It's going to start, what day would I have again? Eh, let's make it a little bit closer. Let's, let's give it like a Friday. Say we're starting right at Friday evening and we're going to be end pretty much on March the 4th. That means our ad will run only on those days and we will spend up to $50. Makes it a little bit easier. And over here, if you haven't noticed, this is the estimated reach and potential engagement. Now, an engagement, as I mentioned before, is a comment, like, or a share. So this is what we should expect to see, but it's an estimate. Down here, optimization for delivery, I just leave it right where it is. I'll go over this real quick, though. As I said, post engagement is for comments, likes, and shares. Usually, most boost posts are like this. Which is why if you boosted and you notice that you got a lot of constellation shares, well, that's pretty much why. Impressions is just pushing it to as many people as possible. And at that point, I would even do a completely different ad. And unique reach means you're going to be showing the ads to one person each and every day, uniquely. Personally, I like keeping on post engagement. And let's keep on going to the creative. Now, the cool thing about a post engagement and another way how it's really similar to a boost post is that it usually will start with use existing post. What does that mean is that it will actually pull a post from your Facebook page. So say, for example, this is a car page. Once I select here, I can just go ahead and pull that post right up. And here in the preview, you see it right away. This will be a very good example of a post engagement. For example, it's a question, Levin or Terreno, that's the type of car this is. You know, do you like it like this or do you like it in the other model? Perfect example of spreading awareness for this company's brand. Hey, which one do you like? Because this brand is about, you know, this type of car. 
Another thing I really recommend is adding a call to action button since learn more, send message, or shop now. For this post, it probably wouldn't be too important since there's no website associated with this brand and we're not really looking to sell people right off the bat. We're looking to just kind of spread ourselves around a little bit. The nice thing about the creative side of an engagement is that it actually will pull right from your page. So kind of keep that in mind if you have a post already on your page. Make sure, say, the text is all ready to go because once it's here, you can't really edit it. You have to go to your page and edit that post directly. Now, it is possible to go ahead and create an ad right from the get-go, so you can go ahead and do so. I recommend for a post engagement just staying with image. There's other types of ads that focus better with video, so I recommend keeping post engagement with pictures and good text. And once you're all happy with this, you click the confirm button. 